Hello everybody, this is Evan Abrams, and in this After Effects tutorial, we're gonna be doing something essential. We're gonna be using the essential graphics window that you can open in After Effects and Premiere to make some templates. So if you are a template person, if you make and sell templates, if you download and use templates, if you think that having easily repeatable and duplicatable things, you can just edit some content will save your workflow. I enjoy it and I don't do either of those things, but it's helped work with clients to give them something that they don't have to open and break. What we're gonna do is make the titles you've seen come up over my face, which does a good job of hiding my face because I'm a very average looking person and it conveys what we'll be making. We're gonna use some expressions, we're gonna use some keyframes, and we're gonna make it easily editable in Premiere. So crack open After Effects in Premiere and enjoy this essential tutorial. Essential. You've got After Effects open, you've got Premiere open, you're ready to get started. So first, we need to make the template and then we will templateify it. I don't know, just convert it, templatize, one of those words, and then we'll open up Premiere and we'll make use of the template. So let's get started real quick here. You need to make a new composition as you start all of your time in After Effects, always making new compositions. And usually I say, don't worry about this. You know, it's, it's whatever you need to export as. But in this case, someone else might have to use it. So please consider what frame size they might be using. Please consider what frame rate they might be using and try to make something that works for your client. Very important. The duration needs to be long enough for people to read and enjoy your graphics, really show them off. And of course, naming things is important. So this is our example. And we're going to make the example. In our example, I showed you some text and a rectangle that resizes based on what text you put into it. As well, the rectangle kind of animates on and then animates off. So let's do that. We're gonna grab some text using the text tool. I'm gonna to put that out there. I'm just gonna close the essential graphics panel for now. We don't need to look at it just right now. We'll come back to it later, I promise. It is the thing we're here to talk about, but we need something to templatize first. So let's call this one line of text, awesome. And what happens when you write out a text layer is it, it creates a layer name that's the same as the text you put out. But, but what I wanna do is rename this just so that there's no ambiguity. So if I change the contents of this, blah, 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 this name doesn't change at all. Wonderful. I'm also forcing it to be all caps and I'm forcing it to be aligned in the center because I'm fairly lazy with this kind of thing. I don't want ascenders and descenders messing up my sweet, sweet style. I'm gonna use the align to stick it in the center of the composition and we will move it along. So this is our one line of text, one, line of text. And around that, we want a rectangle that resizes to the size of the text. Now I'll do that by grabbing a rectangle here. It doesn't have a fill, it does have a stroke. The stroke is five pixels, awesome. And this rectangle, I want its size to have an expression, a fairly moderate expression. I think you'll enjoy this. You start by setting some variables. So I would say L equals, and L, the layer I'm interested in is that text line layer, awesome. Semicolon to close. And I'm gonna say X equals the source rect at time, and then a couple of parentheses, and then dot width, semicolon there. And at the start of that, you need to say, well, which layer do you want the source of? Well, I want you to look at L. So L dot source rect at time dot width. I'm gonna copy that, we're gonna make the next line which is y equals blah 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 dot height. And then our final thing is going to be in square brackets, capital X comma capital Y. And that will net you something that is exactly the size of the text. So if the text changes, so changes the size of the rectangle. Now we need one more feature. I want some padding. I wanna be able to change the padding around the text and I wanna change that uh, sort of in the template. So I need to hook this up to something that can change. So I will go new adjustment layer. And on that adjustment layer that should be called say a control layer, Contr control layer. It's important to name things for what they do. On the control layer, then you should put an effect on there that is a slider control. You should put the slider control out there and the slider will be a lot of fun 
And what we're going to do is we're just going to twirl down, open that up so we can see it. Now we're going to twirl in here and add another variable, p, and p equals that slider control. Awesome. Semicolon at the end of that. And then we're just adding another thing to the end here where it's x comma y plus p comma p, a two-part thing plus a two-part thing, each part adding to the other, and there we go. So now you can slide this and change the padding around it. Now, since we should name things, this is the outline. I would like there to be sort of a, a background behind this thing. I think that would be pretty fun. So you could do that by just sort of adding a fill in here, and then you can twirl down and, and take that fill, and you could say make its opacity like a 10, kind of like that. And as long as this is under that, all of that is true. So I want this to animate on. How do I want it to animate on? Well, I think I will use the transform of the rectangle contents, not the transform of the layer, but of the rectangle contents. And I'm just going to have the scale animate from, you know, 0 comma 0, and then it's going to move ahead to be uh, 0 comma 100, and then we're going to move ahead, and then eventually it'll be 100 comma 100. So it's going to go up in a line and then expand. Now the trouble is I can't really see it when it's a line because it's it's at zero. So maybe it should be like like a point one or something, or I still can't see it. And I can't see it because the stroke is being scaled. So let me just pull the stroke out of there. You can pull it out, make sure the rectangle is above the stroke, and now you can see it because we've got the rectangle scaling, then the stroke is applied. And that is working out perfectly for me. So we're gonna move ahead here to the end. I'm going to use power of keyframing to make this go away, setting a keyframe, moving ahead a little bit. So maybe we uh, take this up to 110 before it goes back down to a very low number, like 0.1. So then we're going to do that. We're going to take these keyframes. We're going to ease them, hitting F9. We're going to go into the graph editor. Or a lot of people use uh, plugins like Flow, for example. So we're just going to pull these handles a little bit and make these kinds of shapes with them. Ooh, stop doing that. There we go. Now we got these kinds of shapes. Boop. So that's pretty cool. And then on this first thing here, I'm just going to pull them thusly. That's pretty neat. And then we're just going to pull this one thusly. We end up with shapes like this. So it opens up. And now we'll just change the timing a little bit. I think that's pretty good. Still a little bit fast, but there we are. So we've got this opening up. We would like it to also reveal the text. So a real simple way to do that is to just duplicate this thing, move it above the text here, take its fill here and make sure that it is, you know, is fully opaque like this. And we'll just have the uh, the text here, the text will look at the text will look at that as its alpha layer. All right? So that's pretty easy. Boom, just like that. So that's a pretty simple thing going on. Now, one thing that does get a little complicated as you can see the text is, is viewable and, and making a little bit of a messy mess. So we can just uh, remove the stroke from the top layer there. And now no more messy mess. All good. And so if you type in something else here, it'll change it. So let's turn what we've made into a template. This only took uh, six minutes or so. That's way too long. But now let's turn this into a template. How fun would that be? So that later we can type in whatever we want when we're in Premiere. So you go Window and you open up the essential graphics. Let's get essential. And the master comp we're looking at is the example. So the master comp is the composition you're going to pull things from. This is uh, which composition are you making into a template? Example. Good, let's give it a name. Let's call this tutorial example file exclamation point. That way we can find it later. And since it has a name, we can now export the thing. And we're going to click this button here, the solo supported properties. Now what this means is in the master comp example, please open every property that we could then move into Premiere and edit in there. All right. So I don't think we're going to edit a lot of things about outline two. So we'll just twirl that shut. But on the control layer, I would like to edit this slider. Now this slider is used for the padding. And since I'm changing the name of it here in the essential graphics panel, it hasn't changed anything here. It's still control slider control. 
But when I look at this in Premiere, it's gonna say padding and then a range. And I can edit the range, let's say from zero to uh, 540. So now a user could select any range between zero and 540. How fun is that? So they can thicken, thin this out as much as they'd like. Great. Now something obvious, we want the source text to be in there. So we can drag the source text in. We can say, well, this is the title line. And then they can type in whatever they want. And as you can see, the Essential Graphics panel lets us test things out and see how it actually works here in After Effects before we export it, which is pretty great. Now, something you should notice is that you can type many, many lines into here if you want. You can start typing, typing lines, lines, lines of text, which for our purposes would make this ugly if someone started doing that. It would not be as we intended it. So we might want to put in the title, like please only put in one line, or you can add a comment. So you can put comments in here and say, mm, only one line, please. You can do that. You can write all sorts of things in here. You write all sorts of instructions for the later user in here. And then you could add other things, like you could add this outlines. Uh, what could you put in here? You could put it stroke width in. Boom, just like that. Now they can edit the stroke width to be super huge if they really want, or non-existent, also good. But because it's not a slider, you can't edit the range and really tamp it down. So keep that in mind. But when you solo the supported properties, you will be seeing everything you could possibly put in. And there's a lot. I'm talking about colors. I'm talking about opacities. I'm talking about percentages. You could put so much stuff. And uh, yeah, what else to say about them? Well, you'll notice that, uh, for example, the position and scale are not here, right? But the opacity is here. Now that's because those are sort of a, a two-part array. If you want to adjust things, position and scale and stuff, just take them and link them to a slider and then put the slider in here and they'll both be part of the thing and you can change them. So anything you want in here, you got it, just like the song says. So we've got things in the essential graphics. The other thing to do is to sort of set a poster frame so you're able to find this thing. So you might as well, you know, write something, pick me, that could be helpful for us. And we set the poster frame. Then we're going to export the motion graphics template and you need to save it, so do that. And after the windows go crazy, we are going to pick a destination. The destination could either be into the essential graphics library, which is linked between your Adobe products, or you can put it on the local drive, which will dump a file anywhere you would like, or you could uh, put it into a library. If there's a, uh, a library on your Adobe, Adobe Cloud that you wanna stick things in, then you could put it there. But I'm gonna put it into the Essential Graphics folder. These two check marks here under compatibility are important if you are planning to have this opened by someone who is not you. The first one will warn you if this template is using fonts not available on Typekit, meaning you're using some fonts that are maybe unique to your computer. And that means that a client who is opening this with Adobe Premiere may not have access to those fonts. So just keep that in mind. And then warn me if After Effects is needed in order to customize this template. So you might have significantly sophisticated things, third-party plugins, all sorts of stuff that someone would need to install After Effects in order to uh, make any changes. So this will give me those warnings. Apparently I had none of them because I'm a very, very good person. So now I open up the Adobe Premiere and it's time to bring those lovely things in here. So what you'd probably be doing is you would have some video and you would be you know, making a sequence of some kind. There's me touching a camera. Now I'm talking. Look at my very tired face. I'm getting a lot of lines around the face. Anyway, then we want to put our graphics on things. So we're in Premiere, we go Window, give me that Essential Graphics. And I'm looking in the Essential Graphics folder, or you could be looking in some libraries, or you could load something in. But what I'm gonna do is find the tutorial example file exclamation point and bring that out onto the timeline. And here it is, we're looking at it, it's right here, we can play it back if I just mute myself and it is looking good. Now, when you click on it, in the essential graphics, you can go to the edit portion and say, well, adjust the padding from zero to 540, just like we said we could. Type in fun new things, yeah, some stuff. And because of all of our formatting, 
all of that is preserved. It's forced into being caps. We could have the stroke width be small, big, whatever. Doesn't matter to me. Could be whatever. And uh, we have that comment that we wanted to tell people. So that is in here as well. The thing I really enjoy about this is I can just grab this thing on the timeline, hold down Alt, and then drag out a new one, and then just select that one and write in, you know, something else, and then adjust these sliders if I want. I'm adjusting, I'm having a great time adjusting these. And uh, you could have two unique things. This used to be a real headache, just so you know why I'm excited, but now you can just do that. And if I was, you know, having a bunch of things, maybe I show my keyboard shortcuts, you know, when I do this, maybe I will. I probably won't, but uh, if I did, I could use something like this to make that happen. Uh, something else to notice is that there's now motion graphics template media that have been uh, loaded up in a file over here in a bin. How great is that? And essentially, you are done. If you have exported this as the, uh, as the little file that you can send to other people, they can enjoy loading it in and having fun with it. You could be selling these templates. You could be emailing them to people. You'd be having a good time. Thank you so much for watching. If this has been essential viewing for you, why not subscribe? Just subscribe, turn on notifications. You'll find out when we're doing stuff, when new videos come out, which is sometimes sporadic, but we put up new tutorials. We have live streams. We try to do one of those every month. So you should turn on notifications to find out when that's happening. If you have questions about this tutorial, well, let me know in the comments and I will try to help you through as best I can. There are no silly questions in the comments. Well, some of the questions in the comments can be silly, but if you have trouble with After Effects motion graphics, if you want to request a tutorial, hit me up on Twitter at EC Abrams on there or get involved on the Facebook group. All the links to that stuff can be found in the description as well. If you want to download the project file that we worked on in here, you can do that at evanabrams.com. All the proceeds from the downloads keep this channel going and uh, really make it a good time. So thank you again for watching. And if you subscribe, then I'll see you around the internet. Thanks a lot and have a great day.